am Candace Harris from Board Game Geek. I'm here with Chris and Johnny O'Neill from Brotherwise Games, and we are taking a look at the latest call to adventure, the Stormlight Archive. Hi guys, how are you? Hi Candace. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Can you can you tell us about uh, Call to Adventure, the Stormlight Archive, and maybe just Call to Adventure high level overall, in case sure. uh, the viewers aren't familiar. Johnny, you wanna you wanna give the the lowdown? Yeah, so uh, the original Call to Adventure came out last year, and uh, we call it a hero building card game uh, because over the course of the game, you're essentially building a character. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, a game like Seven Wonders, uh, except instead of building a civilization, you're making a fantasy character and the ups and downs and uh, dramatic moments of their fantasy life. Uh, so the first game was a hit for us. It was nominated. Uh, for the Origins Award for Game of the Year, uh, you know, great seller. And now we are doing a version that is based on uh, one of the coolest fantasy novel series of all time, The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, so this takes you to that world. It's a standalone game. You can combine it with the original, but it is meant to be played on its own and provide a complete experience. And uh, if, you know, for anybody who loves this world or for Call to Adventure fans, who want to bring in a bunch of new cool gameplay features, uh, the Stormlight Archive will do that. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have it set up on the table and uh, Nikki's lovely hands will hopefully be able to run us through a couple of turns if you guys could uh, direct her. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in this game, the first thing you would normally do is uh, set up your characters. So everybody is dealt um, some different character cards, uh, two origins, two motivations, and two destiny cards. You pick the three that you're most excited about of those, and then you set up your, uh, what we call your story, the, the tableau of cards that you have in front of you. So we have two stories set up here. Uh, one is a peasant uh, who is driven by guilt, whose destiny is to become a stone ward. Uh, and uh, the other is an aristocrat who is a horizon seeker, uh, who is somebody who uh, is destined to become a will shaper. And Stone Ward and Will Shaper are these sort of uh, superhero-esque uh, characters called Knights Radiant uh, in, this, okay. in this world. People who have these really cool powers and, and can do magical stuff. So gotcha. we've got those characters set up and we've already turned over the Act 1 uh, deck, four cards from it. And in this game, the way that you build your character is by gaining traits, which you just draft off the table, sometimes if you uh, need to meet a prerequisite, uh, and facing challenges. And that's where those cool looking runes come in. Uh, those work essentially like two-sided dice and you get more and more of them as your character builds up uh, and you use those to face the challenges. Uh, so if we're playing a game here, uh, is this me versus Chris? Uh, is, this, uh, is this you, Candice, playing? Or uh, is it just Nicole versus Nicole, basically? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever way you guys want to do it, whatever makes sense. Uh, we could have. Yeah, we, uh, well, why don't we start? We'll start with our, we uh, our, our here peasant too. character here uh, first. And so, normally, just one thing to note is that the destiny cards uh, would be face down during a real game. So, we left them face up here just to give you a little bit of a sense. Uh, so, the destiny card uh, and the cards in your hand. So, the cards that just got flipped over, uh, those would normally be hidden in your hand, uh, and then the destiny cards, the stone ward and the will shaper, would also be turned over until they're revealed uh, upon use. Uh, okay. We are setting this game up as a co-op game versus Odium. So the character in the upper right-hand corner who has all those red tokens stacked on him is Odium. Uh, and Odium is a villain in the books, uh, really this sort of supreme villain. And in this game, your goal is ultimately to defeat Odium. And the oh. card that was next to Odium called Radiance United is your quest. There are four different quests that come with this game. And uh, essentially, they're ramping up levels of difficulty. And these define some extra rules nice. of, hey, this is what happens when such and such thing occurs. Uh, essentially, okay. Odium gets more powerful when you do bad stuff and better when you do good stuff. Or, you know, he gets weakened when you do good guy stuff. So gotcha. uh, having said all that, why don't we uh, tackle the first turn? Yeah, so I think uh, Lincoln's down there too. So I think they're gonna be playing each character. Perfect. So one, one thing to talk about with the, you know, as you're building the story, there's also 
uh, sort of a mechanical set of rules laid over that. It's not just a storytelling game. So uh, the, the uh, origin cards that Johnny was pointing out there, they give you some starting abilities, which are those icons in the top right of each card. Uh, and generally also an ability that comes in the text at the bottom of that card. Your middle character card has the uh, motivation, which gives you another ability. Uh, and your destiny generally has your scoring condition, which gives you some unique scoring powers, as well as a special radiant ability, which we're probably not going to see come into effect during these first couple of rounds, because radiant abilities, right. uh, you have to acquire radiant icons and sort of build up your awareness of your radiance and, and that power over time. Um, the neat thing is there's multiples of each of these origin, motivation, and destiny cards. So each game can be a sort of a unique uh, beginning, starting condition, and win condition for you. All right. So looking at my peasant character here, or our peasant character that we see, uh, peasants are uh, start off with two uh, ability runes. Uh, one is this orange one that says uh, that means strength, and is, another is a purple one uh, that means charisma. And uh, unfortunately, the thing I see on the table that I would really want as this character uh, is, is is a card sold into slavery, where there is you know, referencing something that happens to a number of the characters in the book early on, uh, and to go after that. Uh, that has an ally card tucked underneath it. That essentially means that's somebody who's who is uh, you're going to rescue as part of part of facing that challenge. Uh, so we're going to play a special card that we have there uh, called a man's worth, uh, which is in the, that's that's the hero card that we have in our hand, and that gives us a plus three to attempt that kind of challenge. Uh, and the the path that we're going to take called Endure Hard Labor uh, is a constitution path. And because we're a peasant, it says we have a plus one to attempt constitution paths. So there's a lot of little things going on there. They're gonna give us a big bonus on this. However, we don't have any ability runes. So we're gonna just take the three core runes that you uh, take when you face any challenge. Um, so if the rune tray uh, is there, it's the three uh, black and white. Episodal. Yeah, the ones that are in the upper left-hand corner right now. Sorry. Uh, those are the those are the dark runes. Uh, the opposite. Yes. Yeah, there yeah, so uh, essentially, just throw those on the table like dice. Cast them. And we're going to cast the runes and see. Ooh. That result is a three. <laughs> uh, so even if we hadn't spent our uh, our hero card, we would have gotten it. So now we add that uh, that card to our our story. So we pick it up, and then you're actually going to tuck that card under your peasant character uh, so that mm. that bottom uh, endure hard labor is is peeking out. so yeah keep it going under peeking out from the bottom yeah. okay. there you go the there bottom. You. Uh, and so now our peasant has gained a constitution icon which means that's another rune you can use to face challenges and that also comes with a little icon of scales of justice um, so sort of by going through that uh, terrible injustice that person is starting to build a character who is uh, going to be fighting for the side of justice. Uh, they also get that brother card, which they can just set off to the side. And that brother card gives them options uh, for future things. So, you know, as you're telling the story of your character, maybe what happened is you were a peasant in a small town, along came a press gang trying to pull people into the, the military uh, to serve as the bridge crews for the Alethi army. And you go and take your brother's place uh, so that he doesn't have to. So you've got your brother now kind of in your corner as an ally, uh, but you're stuck having that experience, but it makes you stronger. Uh, and and so all, <laughs> nice. all of the art in these cards is based on specific key scenes from the book. So anyone who's a fan of the Stormlight Archive is gonna recognize these scenes, but the text and the actual sort of scene that's being expressed in the card mechanics is much more abstract, allowing you to sort of tell your own story within this world. Yeah, the idea is that you're creating your own character in this world. You're creating your own Night Radiant. Uh, and for anybody who's a fan of these books, that's probably what you're already doing in your head after you read them. Um, so the next thing we would do is we would replace the card that we just took from the board. Um, so flipping over the top card of that Act 1 deck to reveal something else. Uh, and so this is uh, called, 
card called Dark Eyes. In this world, people with dark colored eyes are the underclass. And so uh, they are, that is a trait there that can just be taken uh, without hmm. having to face a challenge. Uh, and that would bring us to okay. our second character. Uh, so Chris, I don't know how clearly you can see this, but do you have an idea of what our aristocrat should try to face here? Well, um, I actually am a big fan of picking up traits when I have them available. Uh, so okay. for the dark eyes trait, what's the, all of the traits have generally a, uh, precondition or a cost that has to be paid. Uh, and if we can put dark eyes up on the close up board. Um, this one says, uh, Basically, you can acquire this one for free, and it's actually going to give you a bonus to your next attempt. Uh, and this is a good example of the scoring system in the game. So many of the cards have uh, a destiny score up there at the top. Uh, this one is a little bit of a tragedy score. So this family's experience in the books, they experience, uh, you know, a tougher time and some tragedy. Um, we don't actually make a, a distinction between sort of triumph score and tragedy score, both can help you win the game, but obviously you're telling a different story with either. So I'm actually just gonna pick up that dark eyes trait and slide that under my aristocrat card. Um, and here I've got sort of an interesting yeah, that, that story thing going on. So one of the things you can do, and it would actually, the, the top would be peeking out, you wouldn't really have okay. a dark eyes aristocrat easily in the books. So my question is here, how did my character become, uh, have a, a dark eyes heritage here, but still become an aristocrat. That's the story that I now have to tell. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. And then, um, so that's, that's as simple as his next turn. And so our peasant's turn uh, would come next. We'd reveal another card. Uh, and this one is sister. <coughs> so that's kind of a counterpart to brother. Um, that gets tucked under one of the existing challenge cards. And why don't we tuck it under trade expedition? Just up on the, the on the on the cards that are out in that row. Yep. So the names of challenge cards are along the left hand side, actually. So. Awesome. Uh, so we would still we... reveal another card here. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. All right. Excellent. And that uh, that card lets us uh, potentially create some sort of heated chase. Uh, but I think you know, for our our peasant character, it's time to it's time to get into the radiant aspects of this. So again, the knights radiant are these characters who have uh, these awesome magical powers, and it's the assembling of the knights radiant that will ultimately uh, destroy this this evil uh, golden god Odium. And uh, so to take our first step toward that for our for our stone ward character, um, we'd like to go ahead and try to face weather the storm. And uh, when I look at this, we've got, uh, this is a constitution, if maybe we can bring that one up on screen. This is a constitution and charisma challenge. And our peasant has okay. one of each. Uh, and our brother card doesn't seem to really help us with this. Uh, so this one, we're, we're really just going for uh, a roll of the dice, a uh, roll of the runes, uh, casting of the runes. So. <laughs> Facing the Stormfather here, I think uh, we're just going to go for it. We, we have maybe kind of a 50-50 chance of getting it, but if we get it, it's a big deal. Uh, so we're going to gather up the three core runes that we always use, plus one Constitution, exactly, and one Charisma rune, uh, the little purple crown rune. And you always, uh, you'll always use any relevant runes you have even if you're facing, in this case, we're going after the charisma path, but we still get to use our constitution. Um, so we'll get more charisma if we win, but we get to use both. So now we take those five runes and uh, I don't think there's anything else we can do to modify it. Uh, so I think we just go for it. All right, roll those runes. Okay. Oh, we used a special uh, rune accidentally there. Uh, so accidentally, uh, one of those runes, yes, yes. Was, was that. So. If, if we grab another one of those, uh, there are there are special runes for each one. They are always the one you use third. Okay, right. so okay. The way you read these results uh, <laughs> is that uh, we see a constitution symbol, and the special symbols are always worth two. That's the kind of shield shaped symbol, and then we have a, the slash shape shape symbol is a one. So this is only a result of three. Uh, the two triangles mean we get to draw a hero or anti hero card. So. 
Uh, we'll draw a hero card, uh, which is one of the ones with the up arrow, yeah. And, uh, and we can take a look at that. If it were something that could help us in the moment, uh, we, we would, could use it now, but this one specifically says play it before you attempt a challenge. Uh, so we can't use okay. that. Uh, the other thing that happens, and it probably isn't going to matter here, is that whenever you get that result of the two triangles, Odium gets to try to act against you. Uh, so if you if flip the top card of the Odium deck, uh, which is the one right under Odium, uh, it's actually... Yeah, there we go. Yep. Yep. If we flip that over, then we'll see what he does to try to oppose us. Okay, and this one says embrace the thrill. Uh, so this says, play this during a challenge, add a dark rune to the attempt. That's kind of like turning to the dark side or just getting angry and, and using that to your advantage. Um, it, it can make you really strong, but kind of lead you down the more tragic path. So we're going to not do that because this is a radiant path. And radiant paths actually can't uh, benefit from dark runes and they, you know, to just ignore that. So we failed, which means we do not get that card. It goes away. Um, so mm -hmm. the uh, whether the storm card is removed from the tab uh, from the table, yeah. and that one just goes sort of off to the side, yeah. and then uh, because we failed, we get an experience token, one of those red tokens, because uh, mm -hmm. you know experience uh, failure is the greatest teacher, <laughs> right? And right. <laughs> it does say there's this spring bond card on the table uh, that says uh, you can gain this trait if you spend to experience or if you attempted a radiant path on your previous turn. We can't do that now. We've already attempted a challenge and that's our whole turn, but next turn we can go for that. And since we're playing co-op, our, uh, our friendly fellow player, I'm sure will be kind enough not to take that card. So we can kind <laughs> of take it out. <laughs> uh, we should also put up the Radiance United card back up on the close-up, uh, the one that's next to Odium. Yes. So, uh, nope, up top, there we are, that one. Let's see that one. Uh, so there are consequences for failure, typically. Uh, are, and we've that uh, there's four of these quests in the game, and each of them is a little bit different. So had that dark rune been allowed, uh, we would have seen, and, and had Johnny cast a moon rune there, a dark rune, whenever a hero gains one of those or fails a challenge, Odium gains an experience token. So Johnny did fail that challenge, so we need to add an experience token to Odium making him harder for us to beat. So uh, yeah, so can, that's yeah. going on top of Odium, and that means uh, at the end of the game, we all have to try to face Odium, who is a nine difficulty challenge. And uh, we, for every, uh, for every number by which we exceed that, uh, we take off one of those tokens. So we not only have to defeat a nine difficulty challenge, we also have to get rid of all those extra tokens on him. So I have okay. unfortunately just made our lives a little bit more difficult uh, but I'm sure Chris will come in and uh, and come to the rest. Save the day. Well, it's it's tough to do. We we want to um, we want to sort of whittle him down over the course of the game, making that easier. The neat thing is mm -hmm. of the various quests that are that ship with this game, some of them really push you towards being as radiant as you can be. Some of them allow you to go a little bit uh, more to the sort of the thrill side or the dark side, even becoming a champion of Odium, where you can theoretically decide that your character is going to, at the last minute, oppose the other characters and give in to their um, sort of wrath and anger. Um, really gotcha. fun in that sense. Um, so the newest card that came out, City of Bells, might be a good uh, match for your aristocrat. Uh, yeah, let's try that. So, uh, that one on the yeah, screen. put that up there. Yeah, okay, so we've got some, this one uses wisdom and intelligence, the City of Bells, a place uh, my aristocrat might go to study, uh, and okay. um, in this case, I can sort of study to become a surgeon, and we associate uh, wisdom with that. Um, you also see another aspect of the game, which are these story icons. So in addition to gaining an ability icon from each of these experiences, should I succeed at, at either, uh, at this challenge and pick one of these paths, I could either get the sort of arcane studies path by studying at the Palladium, or I can get the uh, what we call the divine path, or the uh, it may have another name in this one, where we study to become a surgeon. And story icons are another way to get points, where the more of them they have, the more points they're worth. Um, they also can interact with other cards in kind of cool ways. 
So um, let's put my aristocrat card back up there so I can see sort of. So your yeah, your aristocrat has uh, uh, has wisdom and. Uh... Ah, so I'm a wise, uh, oh, yeah. charismatic aristocrat. <laughs> I think what I will do is attempt this. I'm going to pick the path on the bottom and actually pick up some more wisdom. I'm going to study to become a surgeon. You, the trait you gained last time, uh, that also will uh, give you a bonus here. Um, yeah, so, so trait plus gives two, you a right? Uh, it's a plus two to this. So, uh, yes, you have a you have a chance at failing, but but you're lined up pretty well. So okay. you can have three core runes, one wisdom rune, and you have a plus two from your uh, trait. Yeah. And that trait, uh, you only... You know, it only applies to this turn, so. That's okay. right. So let's gather the three core runes, one of the square rectangular green runes with the wisdom icon, which looks like a an angular eye. Uh, I can't tell from here. Yep. That's it. Uh, and actually, mm -hmm. we're just going to, I'm, um, so just to demonstrate this, because I think we're going to be winding down here soon, I'm actually okay. going to, you know, my character, he's an aristocrat, but he's got this secret dark eyes heritage, which he's been trying to keep secret uh and that has sort of worn away at his soul it's you know he's having denied who he really <laughs> is he's even been sent away from his family to study at the city of bells um and so he's gonna go a little bit dark side here even though i probably don't need to each turn you may spend between one uh, you can spend one of your experience tokens to add a dark rune into your thing so if we take away one of my red experience tokens and add in one of those dark rooms there. Um, this is a risky thing because if I were to fail <laughs> and throw that uh, moon icon there, Odium would get two of these experience icons. That's really not doable here, but let's go ahead and give it a shot so people can see how this works. We'll just cast those. Yeah. With Which path are you taking here? I'm going to study to become a surgeon. I want more wisdom. You're going to angrily study to become a surgeon. <laughs> I'm angrily, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I guess. Are there bad surgeons? I don't know. Um, so this was actually the perfect role for me. I um, really, I, I don't think I only needed two to pass this. I'll take that that study to become a surgeon path and put it underneath my story card and underneath that dark eyes card, so that just the bottom little uh, bar there is sticking out. You got it. Perfect. I, and so uh, the way this works is. Each, each card that you have, your origin, your motivation, and your destiny, can have three cards stacked underneath it. Uh, and the game ends when the first player has uh, amassed a total of nine cards in their tableau. If you're playing competitively, at that point, everybody else gets one last turn. And then okay. you add up everybody's points to see who the winner is. Though we also, of course, encourage telling a story at the end. Uh, in a co-op <laughs> game, after everybody's kind of filled up their board, then you all try to face Odium. And often what you're going to want to do is have saved some of those hero cards, have a few things in reserve to try to face Odium, because Odium is going to be the greatest challenge that you face. Yeah. Uh, we've got, I think, time to just do one more round for our peasant. Uh, well, yeah. our peasant is going to get that uh, spring, spring bond trait that's on the right there. Uh, so this is a case of some of the decision you make and you make when you're looking at kind of risk versus reward. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Traits usually don't give you as much as challenges, but they are uh, valuable to have, and you don't run the risk of failing like I failed last time. Uh, so that spring bond actually gets tucked right under my uh, origin card. So the top is showing. And so two cool things happen there. The spring in this world are kind of like spirit companions uh, who help you unlock your potential. In fact, the power of uh, every night radiant comes from their bond with that sprint. And um, this has two icons. One tells me that I get to draw another hero card when I get my sprint bond. The other uh, tells me that I get a radiant icon. And every time you add a radiant icon to your story, you pull an experience token off of Odium. So my okay. failure last time, um, <laughs> while, while that stung and it put me kind of a turn behind, now I've got this card for free because I attempted a radiant path and my sprint is saying, okay, this seems like a, a heroic person. Uh, so we can pull one experience off of Odium, and we're just one tiny step closer to victory as a co-op team. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank, thanks for walking us through a, a few turns here. Um, there was a question in the chat about asking about, um, from AFOXY1, is it practical to solo play this? 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm assuming yeah. kind of <laughs> yeah, take it, the is, cooperative path. Uh, so this one game, can... Odium starts with five uh, experience tokens. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, you, you lose, obviously, some of the dynamics that you get in a co-op game where people are <clears throat> each other. I would say a solo game is harder than a two, two-player okay. uh, co-op game uh, because in a two or three or four-player game, you can kind of help each other out. And, you know, one person who maybe gets a little less lucky, you know, can, can get, get a clutch card from, uh, from another player. Uh, but solo is very fun. And we've been hearing from a lot of people who are doing that. And cool. um, it's a little bit, you know, we intended the game experience of this game to be a little bit like rolling up a D&D character and coming up with their backstory right. and all of that, which is a really fun process, right? And so here you get this really rich story of, oh, you know, I, yeah. I saved my brother and uh, I met my first love and uh, I overcame right, right. this these trade negotiations here or you know solved a murder mystery there. So it's a lot more than the typical kind of just dungeon crawling or you know fighting bad guys stuff. And then we have like 20 seconds left. So I just wanted to ask, um, is Call to Adventure, the Stormlight Archive currently available? If so, uh, where can people get this? So there are some uh, copies in the Gen Con store at the moment, if folks are visiting Gen Con online uh, in the store there. But it'll also be in stores this week. It's already in some stores, uh, but it should be everywhere this week. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chris and Johnny from Brotherwise Games for uh, giving us a quick look at Call to Adventure, the Stormlight Archive. Oh.